Hey everyone, this is Ben from T3 bringing you another top 8 game from the Vegas Regional that happened on May 7th. Uh, on the 6th. Damn it, it's the 6th. <laughs> anyway, on the left we have Mike playing Max, and on the right we have Austin playing Harpsichord Studios, and special guest commentator with me, I have Timmy Wong. Hello everyone. <laughs> So, uh, this is kind of a, an interesting top eight match. Uh, I know both Mike and Austin, two guys from L.A., uh, have been spending a lot of time playing these IDs uh, recently. So, they're both very well-versed in these decks. Yes. Uh, Austin actually also reps Max as his runner, so he's definitely very familiar with that matchup. Uh, this is the third elimination round. Uh, both these players have won one game and lost one game. Uh, interesting. Uh, both of these players did actually play each other already, but there was a slight mix-up in the bracket, uh, so they're playing each other again? Yeah, that shouldn't have happened so quickly. Uh, it was an unfortunate uh, pairing mismatch. Uh, so they played each other first round, and Mike won. Uh, then Mike played me in the second round, and I managed to beat him. Uh, and now he's playing Austin again. So... We'll see how this goes. I'm not sure which matchup they played the first time. I think it might have been this one, though. Yeah, I think it, this is actually the exact same match, okay. uh, which so is really unfortunate. They've already done this before, and they know what's about to happen. Yeah. Okay. Al although I, I think, uh, b uh, before we get too far, I think the last one ended on turn two. I'm oh, pretty wow. sure Austin scorched Mike turn two. Uh, no, but Mike won. That I'm pretty sure it lasted two turns. Okay. I, Mike might have scorched Austin turn two or something, but there was death turn two and the game was over very quickly. Okay. So looking to oh, avoid Oh, I remember that. now. Okay, they pl actually played the other matchup. So oh, we were was wrong. the other one. Okay. Uh, Mike is playing Blue Sun Scorch on his uh, corpse side. He drew into a very good hand and did like punitive Scorch to win on turn two. Yeah. Um, so but now they're doing the other matchup, which is a little better, a little more palatable. Uh, okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Max or er, uh, Harp Austin here just got set up a little bit, got some money sweeps week. Max uh, day job just looking for money, and it looks like he wanted to set up this uh, eater siphon play. So the day job makes a lot of sense. Turn one with that in mind. And then Austin turns two just scores a breaking news, so that heavily signals that he's playing a twenty four seven kill deck. Uh, normally. As NBN, you don't really care that much about these breaking news. Uh, you can score them later. You want to set up your Astro first. Uh, but if you're playing a 24-7 deck, then you really want to score your breaking news so you can score yet another agenda, uh, forfeit that agenda, and land the kill. Uh, here, though, uh, Mike makes the Eater Siphon play, and uh, Austin decides to res his Data Raven. Uh, so that's going to just put... Uh, Mike in permanent tag me mode at this point. Uh, he's taken two tags from Data Raven basically, and, uh, and two tags, two from, tags siphon. from Siphon. Uh, yeah, and it, once you see the Siphon with the only thing that Data Raven, the only thing protecting HQ, I think that's exactly what Mike's line of play is too. Just Siphon as much and as frequently as he can. Keep NBN on their toes a little bit. NBN has the money that's easily available with Sweeps Week, so. Um, Mike is definitely going to be able to get some money that way. Uh, uh, but he saw the closing hands on top of R&D, which Austin will play right away. Mm -hmm. uh, this is right after a game I just played with Mike, where I played closely counts against him four times. Uh, so I'm sure he wasn't happy about those closely counts either. <laughs> uh, and taking some of those max draws, or those, the max discard and draws a little bit, but Mike has to just gain money here. That's a, a tough spot. Really not what he wanted to see, although with the Wanton in hand, I expect that's a play that we're going to see uh, pretty soon. Um, obviously, he doesn't really care about this Data Raven at all, and Austin doesn't seem to be worried about protecting HQ. Well, against uh, this very likely Harpsichord kill deck, uh, that Wanton is actually really important for trashing meat damage cards. So he probably wants to save that until like right before when... Uh, Austin, when he thinks Austin has the meat damage cards he needs, and then go and, and trash as many of them as he can. Uh, oh, here he goes. Wanton? See, I would I would have thought the... I think this is a good play here, because Austin trying to score out that breaking news so early, I would be afraid that he's trying to 
force that quickly. If Austin is trying to score breaking news out so early instead of protecting, you know, putting a hard ETR over HQ or even adding a second ice over R&D, um, I think Austin did signal that the kill, he's going to try and rush the kill, which mm -hmm. would imply that there's at least one or two pieces in his hand. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, as Harpsichord, it's it's a pretty frequent play for them to just score breaking news whenever they can because it just gets them closer to their win condition. But yeah, like definitely not a bad play to just want in there. Uh, but, you know, Max losing the Apocalypse, so it is an Apocalypse deck, which is nice to know uh, if Austin didn't know already. But both, I mentioned it before, both of these guys are part of the SoCal meta, uh, greater LA area, so we they've, they've played each other. This isn't a surprise, I don't think. Well, Mike is from Ventura County, uh, where John D. lives, uh, So and Austin is from uh, Los Angeles, so they've maybe played each other. I wouldn't say it's a certainty. Uh, I think right. I've seen them both at various store champs. Mm -hmm. um, but at any rate, the... Uh, Mike checks archives after the one and hits an explode. Uh, yeah, Austin put a card down to signal that maybe he has Jackson, but uh, yeah, might as well call that bluff. So, well played, Mike. Yeah, and... Uh, he hits a news team. Well, okay, tags. More tags. News team is not as good when the runner has just gone full on tags. Uh, but Mike is in a little bit of a economic issue here. I mean, that's true. he needs to get a siphon as soon as possible. Yeah, another siphon. I mean, I don't really think the Max deck has a lot of economy from this well, cheap. Oh, deja, deja vuing vu. the siphon. That that Very makes likely. that easy. So as yep. Austin, Austin could actually choose to dump his money into this Data Raven Trace instead of letting Mike steal it. Oh, he can also res a card, maybe. Um, that's probably a good play, seeing as how Mike is completely broke. The funny thing is neither side really needs money all that badly. Uh, the Corp wants the money to be able to get ice res on R&D, but other than that, neither of them really need money at this point. Uh, it's just a pure race, basically. Uh, Mike needs to get as many agendas as possible, and he can only get one a turn. Uh, but Harp needs to just draw into the kill combo uh, to meet damage cards, basically. Traffic, Scorch, or Scorch, Scorch. Um, so whichever one of them manages to do it first will win. And uh, we... I was wrong on that on that read before, so Mike didn't wasn't able to hit any of the those kill cards either, mm -hmm. on uh, on the wanton. So it was exploded news team and some other card. Yeah. So funny thing about this top eight was uh, there were five guys from SoCal in the top eight and three guys from the Utah meta, and in the first round, uh, the three none of the three Utah guys were paired against each other. They were all paired against one of us, uh, and SoCal managed to win all three of those matchups. So that felt pretty nice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're about. Showing our supremacy <laughs> in an obscure middle ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Mike's mostly just jockeying a little bit here, trying to secure his board state too um and the the siphons are doing a really good job of keeping austin poor a really really good job yeah, although that so. sweeps week is is going to help mm -hmm. so austin res the san san city grid to deny money and then probably dump the rest into the data raven trace which is good play but then i think mike I, just siphoned yet again because that's what his deck does no, I think uh, I don't think he dumped. I don't think Austin dumped money into the data. Oh, really? Trace. Yeah, I, I think he just let his, the rest of his money get siphoned. I think he did. Yeah. Oh, that's weird to res the sand sand there. Then doesn't really accomplish anything. Um. Yeah, I think that might have been a slight misplay. As we mentioned, this is after a long day of Netrunner, so it's it's likely that it was uh, just overlooked. Probably yeah. Um, I think you either choose to try to keep money and not res anything, or to dump all your money. Uh, and I think probably dumping money is the right choice there. It usually or, is, unless you have a lot of credits as a corp. At least going down to one credit. 
I think. Yeah, uh, I think. Make it make them decide if they want to steal one or take an access. I think is fair. My usual metric is I go down to two credits if I want them to siphon uh, to take the tax, and I go down to one credit if I don't want them to siphon. Okay. Um, Seems to make sense. I mean, four credits yeah. is not isn't bad. That's enticing enough for a runner. Mm -hmm. um, and the one credit isn't really worth it, but <laughs> then that's when you don't want them to siphon. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Max is definitely not going to be dropping tags at this point. He's just going into HQ and trying to hit whatever's in there. Looks like it's pretty empty, though. Austin doesn't seem like he's drawing anything relevant. But I'm pretty sure this was just the same old siphon, and I don't oh, think he okay, broke... Right. I don't think Mike broke the, the data raven. So I feel like Austin's uh, not taking full advantage of the trace that he has in front, but I, I yeah, mean, Mike did He's just did not have... seeing that play, I guess. And Mike did have the uh, option to break it, too. So I, I feel like in that case, it wasn't... Okay. Neither of them is really maybe like playing around what the other person can do. Uh, <laughs> hey, you said it. It's a race, right? Yeah, it's... Yeah. I don't know how much it'll matter because money isn't really the most important thing in this game, honestly. Yeah. Still, like... As... Austin, like, why let them have all the money in the world when you can choose not to let them have all the money in the world? Yeah, and either uh, I'm wondering what's over Austin's R&D because this looks, yep, yeah, this is exactly what I was going to say. It looks like this is a keyhole deck, um, mm -hmm. and I was just waiting for it. So if yeah. if Austin can't res whatever is over R&D, then it's going to be a big issue for him. And this would be something pretty good, too, because Eater Keyhole is a pretty nice combo. Uh, I guess yeah. Wraparound's always on the table with NBN. Um, that Definitely. would make the most sense. Yeah, as as Max, uh, Max is well-suited for the stack because you just draw into your combo pieces so quickly with her ability. Uh, Mike had to dig a little bit for that Keyhole, but he got it fast enough because of Max Acceleration. And the, the Siphons, man. Uh, the Siphons were able to keep Austin in this early gain stage sure, long yeah. enough to hold him back. I mean, it, Austin it is Austin hasn't a been able to get anything going. But, I mean, he's... To be fair, Max has accomplished his the goal of getting himself tagged for Austin. So now Austin just needs to draw those meat damage cards. And uh, have the money to play them. Yes. Nice call on the wraparound. Yeah. Of course, we did watch this game before, so... Yeah, a bit of foreknowledge. Uh, but yeah, that wraparound is going to do great work. It's the perfect dice for MBN in this situation. Uh, since Max doesn't have a real fractor, she needs to spend uh, six credits with Eater to break that two-cost piece device. So definitely great. Quite the tax. All uh, the value on that wraparound. So, okay. So Mike dis does decide to pay through the wrap on the first... Try, uh, run through, which makes sense because uh, of those successful siphons, uh, Mike has all the money he needs. He can't afford to do it forever, but he can do it a few times. Uh, he And he finds a profiteering, which he's going to steal, uh, which makes sense against Harpsichord because you really need to get an agenda on every turn that you can. Uh, if you try to wait, then they might set up a situation where they're just going to win faster than you can win. Uh, so on every turn, you can steal an agenda against Harpsichord. You want to steal an agenda. Yeah, and that it really is one of the abilities that slows down the game the most. Not in a, in a negative way, certainly, but it, it makes it much more difficult to, to get the points. Definitely. Super good. Super good in NBN. But the wraparound, for, for now, uh, Mike can't really afford to pay six every time for, for a keyhole. I don't think... You know, if he was closer to winning, you know, if he was at five points at game point instead of at two or three, maybe you do it as often as you can, but... Well, if he has more siphons, he could just keep getting, like, ten credits every two turns, and that would certainly pay for it. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting spot now. That wraparound is very good, so uh, Max needs to find her solution to wraparound. Uh, I believe Mike is playing... Both Corroder and Morningstar in this deck. Ooh, Morningstar. Yeah. So one of those would deal with the wraparound nicely. Well, Morningstar would deal with anything nicely. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> with the small exception of your uh, 
your Heimdall or your curtain wall or something. Any of these small barriers. <laughs> Great for Eli. Mm, tense situation. As Mike, you've got to be feeling pretty good, but you also know that at any time you can just lose to the traffic scorch. Uh, and as Austin, similarly, you got to feel like, man, I just need to draw these cards and I win. All right, so he's going to check HQ, which is easy now that he's in tag hell. Looks yeah. like he has like 10 tags or something. Oh, yeah. Resistor would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and he finds oh. in the jungle. Four points now. Just the one pointer, but that's a lot. Four is a lot better than, than the three, so. Harpsichord plays so many one pointers because their ability kind of encourages it. Yeah. And I mean, even right now, there's no reason for Mike to run. So he's he's would probably be better off even gaining a credit if he has no way to, to boost his economy right now. Yeah. Um. The, I see a deja vu in his hand, which is great. He's probably just waiting for Austin to get up to five dollars, so to maximize the the siphon. Or he could be waiting for Max to mill uh, something he needs, like a corridor. Or yeah, that's true. Uh, like. Siphon always seems great if you can land it, but like I've said, this game isn't really going to come down to the money, probably. Uh, yeah, as... Well, I'm, no, I don't think that's entirely true. I think if you go up to five, if Austin goes up to five against, this, against Mike's deck... Mike absolutely should siphon. Be, like, even if he's not... The money itself isn't going to win the game, but if Austin has the Scorch... Mm -hmm. then you need to deny that opportunity at every, every chance you get, I think. It's not bad, but getting him down to zero credits only slows him down for one turn. So you, And you probably can't really win in one turn because you're against Harpsichord. Uh, so really, if he has the kill pieces, like you have to siphon every turn until uh, he kills you or you win. So that seems like a really tough thing to do. Well, anyway, he goes for it. <laughs> <laughs> can't siphon, why not? Uh, yeah, I don't think these guys are uh, treating the Data Raven with the respect they should, but oh well. Long day of Netrunner will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, either, either way, I, I don't know. I, I think I would disagree. It does only buy you an extra turn, but... Well, maybe two turns if they don't have traffic accident and they need two Scorches. True. And it's pretty good. True. And right now, we don't know... Like, the only influence we've really seen is the Sand Sand. So there's a lot of questions uh, yeah. about... Can we see Austin's hand? I don't see any Wayland cards in there. Uh, it doesn't look like it. But it's very hard to tell. Yeah. All right, what's Mike doing here? He's spending a lot of money. I don't think he's oh, trying to see if counting. it's worth going for the keyhole. But... Uh, Austin's drawn up a, a lot, hasn't he? I think there's a, some face-down cards that Mike hasn't checked. I mean, I'm sure Austin's not pitching agendas at this point, but maybe. Cool. One of Austin's favorite plays with this deck is to dunch a whole bunch of agendas. Dip. <laughs> Get rid of a whole bunch of agendas and put them in archives, uh, trusting the harpsichord ability to protect him. Uh, and if the runner does run archives, then they give Austin a ton of money from the exploded loses and such. So that's a nasty little trick that Harpsichord can pull. It doesn't seem to make too much sense in this situation because Max only needs to steal about two more agendas before winning. Yeah, that would be... I, that would just put Austin out on a timer. Look, he's considering some... Oh, man! There it is! <laughs> There's the Morningstar. Overriding the Faust and the Eater for the Morningstar. That's uh, a crazy play. <laughs> that is a crazy play, yeah. So he's really kind of going all in here. If... Austin manages to get a uh, end the run like code gate on R and D. Then he needs he's going to be set back. He needs to play like another solution and then trash something else. Uh, but <laughs> it looks like it's working out for him. <laughs> Two points. The Astro script. There it is. A couple other stuff. Some more yeah. tags. What's it matter? They're just tags. All right. So Mike's on six points. Not looking good for Austin. No, it, Austin really needs to protect R&D. You, you just mentioned that as well, but I don't think he has ice in his hand. Um, what do we got? 
I don't think I see any Whalen cards in there either, Timmy. I think you're right. I can't tell what any of those cards I, are. That might be an Archangel. Is there an Archangel there? I think the first card is Salem's Hospitality. Oh, um, which, that's a good card. I really like that include. Yeah, if he has a Scorch, he could tr go for it. Hope he gets really lucky and names the card that Mike has two of in his hand. And then finish with Scorch. Salem costs two, doesn't it? It does. He would need okay. more credits to do that. Uh, well, if that's it doesn't look like he has the Scorch anyway. No, it doesn't. I, I guess... Right, he's just going to hedge fund. Makes sense. Gain two hedge fund. I guess he doesn't have an Archangel then. Like, I, you put an Archangel over R&D there. Absolutely. I mean... Well, he only had three credits. So click, click. Click, click, yeah, install. Archangel. And yeah. then Archangel the Morningstar back. It's going to... It would That would have been good. It would kill Mike's has tempo Archangel. so hard. Yeah. He can't let Mike just do oh, this four times. Is. Yeah. He's going to lose. Yeah. And he does. Check it. No Less. Jackson protection there. We do see a Scorch at the very bottom of Austin's oh, deck cool. and traffic, so... Oh, some quantum predictor models. He's showing, like, all the points that Mike wasn't able to steal. Awesome. A lot of good Just... stuff at the bottom of the deck. Yep. That's how it's going to be every once in a while. You don't always get the cards you want to see. Yeah, especially when the runner just goes full aggro and steals all your points starting turn one. Yeah, I think Austin was really hoping that Data Raven could hold up at least more than a turn or two. And just having it invalidated first turn especially. Or second turn, I guess, because of the day job. Yeah, shows how dangerous it is to rely on a pure tagging ice like that to defend against the Siphon deck. But that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you very much for watching. And again, thank you very much, Timmy, for commenting with me. Thanks to Mike Summers and Austin Bell for playing a great game for us. And... Uh, we'll have more games coming up on this channel. Uh, until next time, guys. Later.